<laughs> well, good evening. Welcome to the Orangeboro Board of Commissioners special meeting, June 16, 2020. At this time, uh, I would like to ask the City Clerk, Ms. Beth Cecil, to please call the roll. Commissioner Jeff Sanford. Here. Commissioner Larry Condor. Here. Mayor Tom Watson. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Larry Magliner. Here. Commissioner Pam Smith Wright. Here. Thank you. At this time, we'll have the invocation and the pledge and ask Commissioner Jeff Sanford to lead us in prayer, please. Thank you. Please bow your heads and play, uh, pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, please guide us, guide us tonight to make wise decisions for our community. Let us as leaders lift up our neighbors with our words and our actions. Shine your light on our community so we may be beacons of hope for other communities. In these things we pray, amen. Amen. Thank you, Jeffrey. Uh, item four, business. Please consider approval of the minutes from June the 2nd, 2020. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Could I have a second, please? Thank you, Ms. Kemp, Commissioner Smith. Right, any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed, motion carries. Thank you. Item four B, consider these abo board appointments, please. Orangeboro Davis County Drug and Alcohol Steering Committee. Reappoint Debbie Zerner Johnson as a joint City County appointment to a term expiring September the 1st, 2022. Appoint Sarah Adkins as a joint City County appointment to a term expiring September 1st, 2022. Uh, could I have a motion to approve, please? Motion. So that, thank you. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed, motion carries. Thank you. Item five is an ordinance second reading there will be a roll call vote council thank you mayor you're welcome ordinance 6-2020 an ordinance amending chapter 3 article 3 section 3-57 of the Owensboro municipal code relating to the entertainment destination center publicly read for approval on second reading this 16th day of june 2020. thank you uh this is the second reading so we had quite a bit of discussion last time any but any more that make a motion that make a motion yet i already did uh, could I, I make a motion to approve could i have a second please second okay any discussion by anyone from the dais i don't have, well i just want to say that commissioner smith right oh that's all right i just wanted to say that um i want people to understand that this can be changed at any time if it doesn't work out or whatever i don't want people to think that this is set in stone forever good point any other discussion hearing none roll call please miss cecil commissioner sanford yes commissioner condor i recuse please mayor watson yes mayor pro tem magliner yes commissioner smith right aye thank you motion approved Thank you, Commissioner Condor, for your exclusion. Okay, item 5B, Council. Ordinance 7 2020, an ordinance adopting and approving the annual budget of the City of Owensboro, Kentucky, for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2020, and ending June 30th, 2021, and appropriating the revenues to the various departments of the city as set forth herein publicly read for approval on second reading this 16th day of June 2020. I make a motion to approve. Could I have a second, please? Second. Any comments? City Manager, anybody up here left anything they'd like to add to this? Thank you, please. Commissioner Condor. Thank you, Mayor. Well, uh, just one comment, please, of just uh, really a pat on the back of how well Pamela Canary has done at transit. The, one of the biggest budget amendment uh, items you'll see is in transit and she has along with the rest of her staff done an outstanding job with transit in just what two years i believe that she's been there so kudos to her uh, it is duly appreciated and it is noticed thank you mayor it's amazing what you can do when you have a little money 
<laughs> Any other comments? Okay. Roll call, Ms. Cecil, please. Commissioner Condor? Yes. Mayor Watson? Yes. Mayor Protea Magliner? Yes. Commissioner Smithwright? Aye. Commissioner Sanford? Yes. Thank you. Motion carries. Item 5C, please. Ordinance 8 2020, an ordinance amending the annual budget for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2019, and ending June 30th, 2020 and amending Ordinance 9-2019 to appropriate funds for COVID-19 related expenses, overtime costs due to vacancies, and changes in health insurance elections in the general fund. To carry over grant revenue for two buses and to receive and appropriate CARES Act funds in transit fund, to receive and appropriate CARES Act funds in community development fund, and to appropriate funds for OBKY small business grants in the economic development fund. Publicly read for approval on second reading the 16th day of June, 2020. Thank you, sir. Could I have a motion to approve, please? Motion. Could I have a second, please? Second. Any more discussion on this item? Hearing none, is, 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 are we ready to vote? Yes, sir. I mean, I thought you raised your hand. Okay. Uh, roll call, Ms. Cecil, please. Mayor Watson? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Magliner? Yes. Commissioner Smithwright? Aye. Commissioner Sanford? Yes. Commissioner Condor? Yes. Thank you. Most carries uh, ordinance is uh, first reading, none tonight. Item 7, Municipal Orders Council. Municipal Order 16 2020, a municipal order authorizing and directing the mayor to execute a second amended lease with the Bluegrass Music Hall of Fame and Museum, formerly the International Bluegrass Music Museum Incorporated, amending terms relating to the use of the Capital Reserve Maintenance Fund, releasing all financial claims against the city, and reaffirming all terms in the lease and first amended lease. Introduced and publicly read for approval this 16th day of June, 2020. Thank you. Uh, could I have a motion to approve that, please? Motion. Second. Second. Anybody have any? Discussion, City Manager, you have something? I do. Okay. This municipal order authorizes an amendment to the lease between the city and the Bluegrass Music Hall of Fame and Museum. The city owns the building, and when the new museum was being developed, the city and the museum entered into a lease for the museum to operate the facility. The lease requires the museum to have a capital maintenance reserve of $250,000 for capital maintenance and uh, capital and maintenance needs of the property. Like many organizations, COVID-19 has had negative implications for the museum. However, because of the timing of the cancellations and closings due to the pandemic and the dates of romp and related advanced ticket sales, the impact on the Bluegrass Museum is much greater than a typical organization. This municipal order authorizes the museum or allows the museum to use $100,000 from the required $250,000 capital maintenance reserve specifically for cash flow and expenses related to COVID-19 and ROMP. The $100,000 to be borrowed from the capital maintenance reserve must be repaid within five years to ensure funds remain available for the facility as needed in the future. Thank you. Uh, could I ask Ms. Hamrick a question? Yes, ma'am. Do they actually have $250,000 in the maintenance account? There is as of today, yes. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other discussion? Okay. Hearing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Okay. City manager items. I think that's where we are. Is that correct, <laughs> city manager? Yes. Uh, Mayor Angela Hamrick will present the April financial report. Um, if you'll refer to your screen, um, you'll see the graphs that um, we've become accustomed to seeing with the monthly uh, report. Um, I will re be reporting on the general fund activity for the month of April. You may refer uh, commission to page three of the financial packet if you wish to see more detail. Slide one. Um, th for the month of April 2020, actual revenues of $4,693,440 were less than budgeted revenues of 6,075,754. 
This variance is primarily due to timing in the receipt of our net profit license fees, which is due to businesses having taken advantage of the extended filing deadline, which was set forth by the Internal Revenue Service, followed by the state, and followed by the city of Owensboro. So um, with April usually being our biggest month, that will now be in July when we receive those cash proceeds. The next slide shows uh, 10 months ended 2020, April 2020 for total actual revenues of $50,724,625, which exceeded budgeted revenues of $50,511,271 for a positive variance of $213,354. <coughs> Excuse me. This variance is primarily due to higher occupational payroll withholding tax offset by the lower net profit license fee, which we had just discussed in the previous slide. The next slide shows your general fund expenditures for the month of April 2020. Actual expenditures of $4,975,831 were less than our budgeted, expendi budgeted expenditures of $5,310,354 for a variance of $334,523. This is primarily due to savings in personnel services and timing in other expenditures. Our next slide shows general fund expenditures for the 10 months ended April 2020. Actual expenditures of $45,910,867 were less than the budgeted expenditures of $48,673,737. The variance is primarily due to savings in personal services and timing in various areas such as street work, supplies, and outside services. On the next slide is where we chart our revenues and our expenditures by month. The revenues are depicted with the green line and the expenditures by the red. As you can see on the chart, our revenues <coughs> excuse me, and expenses are cyclical meaning that expenses exceed revenues in certain months, such as our warmer months when street and grounds maintenance and parks are in full swing. As you can see for the month of August, the red line is higher than the green. Likewise, there are months that have higher revenues, such as October and November, and you'll see that that green line spikes way up that, those two months. That's due to collection of real and personal property taxes. And typically, April, due to collect, collection of net profit taxes, is higher. However, this year, this month, due to the extended filing deadline, we are below budget uh, for this revenue stream. If anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to try and answer. Commissioner Sanford. Uh, <clears throat> Ms. Hamrick, I got a quick question. Your net profits are down. They're not due until July 15th, correct? That's, That's correct. correct. So basically based on your occupational tax, which is, looks to be stronger, do you expect our net profits to be strong also, or, or how do you? Well, um, it, often they, one will be a reflection of the other. Um, it, occupational is really a, a clearer picture of where we are in our economy as far as employment. Okay. Net profits, uh, most businesses do their tax strategizing, uh -huh. and so they might bring in a lot of profits, but they might spend a lot on capital equipment as well. Now. Um, you will see that we are 649,000 under budget for year-to-date April on net profits. But we'll, we'll estimate where um, we think we'll be. Actually, we'll have a pretty good idea because by the time we close the books for the auditors, we'll have received most of that and accrue it back into the year. So um, we still look to have, I think, a good year for revenues. Thank you. You're welcome. Commissioner Condor. Thank you, Mayor. Just You're welcome. Oh, um, Angela, one question. In con concerning the effects of COVID-19, and it's interesting how everything has been moving up and down, expenses lower, maybe in parks departments, but yet revenues and occupationals higher because you're hiring more people at Walmart. But is what area of all of our financial reports has taken the biggest hit? If you, because it looks as if our convention center, for example, being cl closed completely down, that is one of the biggest areas where we have had a biggest, uh, big expense I, I um without seeing the final net profits um, that would be I would agree with you on that that the Convention Center is probably the single largest hardest hit 
uh, just due to the nature of what they do. It's, it's large groups. And, and so, um, of course, the expenses of the building and so forth continue. They don't stop. And so, um, and, and that's, that was part of our budget amendment was, was to capture that. Uh, that's also one item that I intend to submit for, for uh, reimbursement consideration is that additional uh, subsidy. And so um, we've also had additional uh, expenditures for the PPE, uh, the masks, the gloves, the hand sanitizer, and so forth. Um, but our occupational um, has not, I've not seen it affect that like I thought it would. And in being in Zoom uh, conferences with my fellow finance directors, they've all kind of made the same statements. It's not affected them as much as we had once thought it might, you know, a couple months ago. So, um, but like I've said before, Owensboro's a pretty diverse economy here, and we're very fortunate with what we have. Very good. Thank you, Angela. You're welcome. Thank you, Mayor. Welcome. I got a text that says our Facebook live streaming's down. It went down after 12 minutes into it, so some people were watching to see how the votes were going. So I apologize for that, but that's a uh, way out of my yes, ma'am. We'll replay that. We'll have it posted on our website. Okay. Are we back up and running? Well, we're still recording. Still, still, still recording, but we will replay that when it at another time correct yes on our website on our website yeah I knew there was a part I didn't hardly hear okay thanks Michelle for telling us that uh, okay uh, I'm lost oh I need to make a motion to file for anybody have any other questions okay. motion to file for financial report for Mo audit please motion second any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Item 8B, consider personnel appointments. Uh, city Manager. Thank you, Mayor. You're welcome. John David Rudy, probationary, full-time, non-civil service, promotional appointment to maintenance worker with Public Works Grounds Department, effective June 21st. Nicholas Bramschreiber, Jeffrey Glass, and Kenneth Winchester, regular full-time non-civil service appointments to public system to network systems engineer with the information technology department, effective June 23rd. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve. Could I have a second, please? Second. And you better keep that Jeffrey Glass guy. He bails me out all the time. <laughs> Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. City Manager, you have comments? No additional comments. Communication from elected officials, please. I don't have to read all that stuff because there's no public, right? Okay, Commissioner Smith Wright? Um, just wanted to um, congratulate the LBGQT community on uh, the Supreme Court's uh, motion. And also, I want to thank our citizens for the way they're handling themselves doing all of this um, protesting and everything. We, we live in a safe community, and um, I just wanted to thank our citizens for how they're handling themselves. Thank you. Pam, could I ask you a question that the Supreme Court decision, how will that affect local governments? Um, w well, I, I think when the Supreme Court hands down a ju judgment that it does affect the local. Now, I know the young lady in the, today's paper says it, that it doesn't do what she, oh, it doesn't do what she wants it to do. So, I mean, I'm not sure exactly what what she wants. So broad, I yeah. just was curious yeah. if, since you're uh, up on it a little bit more than I am, I thought maybe you could tell, it's such a broad decision that it's kind of interesting how well, it, it, it filter down through state government and then local governments. It, it, Mayor, if yes, I sure. Could, Steve uh, Lynn, he's a lawyer, he knows. <laughs> uh, it, um, it will uh, affect us locally. It amends basically the Title VII protections uh, about sex uh, discrimination that uh, are in uh, federal law. Um, now, I, as I understood I've, uh, from the ladies' uh, comments that uh, perhaps it, it does not extend to landlords and things yes. of that sort. 
uh, but it this uh, is jobs more or less it's, it's jobs that uh, the same protection that that uh, uh, man or, or that women everybody have had for years now. everybody is equal now but it does not have anything to do with the rental problem no which is 99.7 percent of our issues that we have at hrc it seems like oh, right okay and um yes ma'am well i just wanted to add that uh you know that was one of the things that i was always saying is that the human relations commission that's part of their their mission is that you know there shouldn't be any discrimination because because of uh racial religion sexuality and all of that and and it was already kind of in their their graphs but uh, you know somehow it was overlooked but now it's it's pretty p cut and dry so okay thank you uh, i must skip you commissioner sanford i have nothing this evening mayor thank you <laughs> <laughs> mayor just want to have a little bit of fun with nobody else around i guess right <laughs> a little levity in life it's pretty boring <laughs> it is just a little bit i, I do mayor want to uh, go back on what uh, the discussion was i text this morning to uh, county attorney claude porter because <clears throat> this issue of what was happening with L lgbtq i a's my question to him was with SOTUS ruling on essentially the definition of the word sex in Title VII of the Civil Rights Act, does this mean there's no need for state or local laws addressing non-discrimination ordinance in regards to employment, housing, and public accommodation? He said, mostly, but I want to read it with an open mind, see how they applied it, but I think it will. Let me review. So. It is being brought up. Uh, County Attorney Claude Porter is probably going to be, as everybody is, I guess, in, throughout the nation, of what is going to be done or can or cannot be. So uh, that was his response. Just wanted to maybe throw that out for consideration. The, um, so he can get the calls. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. Exactly. He's the lawyer that's on top of it, wrote it for the county. He would be able to answer those questions. Uh, Father's Day is coming up uh, for all those who hopefully can be, uh, get together and uh, those who are dads. It takes a long time to be a dad. Uh, happy Father's Day. So uh, the last comment I have seen around our city since the sidewalks have been opened up for um, the restaurants throughout our city, Real Hacienda, downtown, every place. And the weather has been very good to do so. It has been an awesome thing to see everyone out tables apart and everything else of being able to enjoy uh, and getting back out and seeing friends and family. So with that, uh, thank you, Mayor, for the time. Okay, I'm answering another text. <laughs> Stupid. Uh, Commissioner Maglinger, Mayor thank, Pro Tem. Thank you, Mayor. I want to thank, thank I want to thank everyone involved in putting this budget together. They worked hard. Uh, all of the department heads, the staff, you know, we have some unknown times uh, ahead of us this coming year. So uh, thanks for the hard work, and I think you did a great job. Thank you. I have no comments. Hearing no, any more discussion, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Could I have a second, please? Second. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 We are adjourned.